a little bit at least. Thank you. 
There it is. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this is the day which our Lord has made. Let us together rejoice and be glad in it. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship from Psalm 8. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. I am in awe when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us worship God. Please join me in singing number 323 in your hymnals, Holy, Holy, Holy. We are reminded, sisters and brothers in Christ, that we do not come here to declare our own glory or goodness or grace, but we come to declare God's. For we ourselves uh, know that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will forgive all of our unrighteousness. And so in that manner and in that spirit, I invite you to pray with me in our unison prayer of confession. Please join with me in one voice. Triune God, we come this morning knowing we have grieved you. Father, Mother God, we have been poor stewards of your magnificent creation. Jesus, 
we have not loved our neighbors, much less our enemies, as you exemplified and instructed. Holy Spirit, we have been better at criticizing than encouraging people in the faith. Father, Mother, God, have mercy upon us. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us. Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Amen. Hear these words of assurance, as far as the east is from the west, so far does God remove our sins and our transgressions before us. As a mother has compassion upon her children, so the Lord has compassion and mercy upon us. For there is neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities, nothing above the heavens or below the earth, nothing in all of God's creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. These are the good and faithful words of assurance. I encourage you now to listen to the way of life that God sets before us. In the Ten Commandments, God gave all these words to Moses saying, I am the Lord your God who has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any graven image or any likeness of anything that is on the heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him or her guiltless who, guiltless who takes their name in vain, his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy, as the Lord has commanded you. Honor your father and your mother, as the Lord has commanded you, for your days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Neither shall you covet your neighbor's wife, or your neighbor's spouse, or anything, his field, his manservant, maidservant, ox or ass, anything that is your neighbor's. Jesus proclaimed the goodness of the law when he instructed us as a lawyer came to Jesus and asked, what is the greatest law? And Jesus said, you know, you have read it, you have heard it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two depend all the law and all the prophets. If you love God and love your neighbor, you will fulfill all that God instructs us. And we can live in peace with God and our neighbor. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you so much for your ministry among us. So I invite the children to come down at this time and join us for a, a message. So thank you for coming. It's great to see you. Wonderful. Good to see you guys. You're looking sharp. I really like your shirt. Star Wars looking good. All right. Wow. Beautiful. You all are looking very good this morning. I'm so happy that you made it to church today. It's a great day. God's given us beautiful sunshine, warmth, the beginning of summer. School's getting out, right? Yep. Another week? Yes. All right. Looking forward to summer vacation? Yeah, all right. I got it. I always love summer vacation. So... It was a very hot day yesterday. Was it humid as well? It was raining. Was it raining? Yeah. It didn't rain at my house. Did it rain at your house? Yeah, we got that. Oh, my word. I heard some thunder the other night, and there was a, no, not a cloud in the sky. I think it was like heat thunder or something. I heard thunder. Did you hear thunder as well? My wife said your stomach. No, I said it's the thunder outside. Anyway. Did you hear some thunder? Well, good. Thanks. Well, I'm glad that you, all of you are in a good mood today. So we're going to be uh, starting with a good morning. And so I would invite you to join with me to help welcome everybody with a great good morning at the count of three. You guys ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good job. Today is called Trinity Sunday. Anybody know what Trinity is? Hmm, what is Trinity? Bread. You get to eat bread? That's Communion Sunday. That's a good one. Yeah, eat bread and drink some grape juice and wine. That's true. It's kind of like that. That's a, that, that was a great observation, but it isn't. It's called, that's Communion, and we're talking about Trinity. So what do you think Trinity is? Hospital, Trinity Hospital. Oh, man. There we go. That is perfect. You know what? It is. That's how the hospital was named. It was actually named after Trinity means that God is known to us in three different ways. Is the father or mother, as we talked about, in other words, is creator, as Jesus Christ, the Son, and as the Holy Spirit that is our empower and encourager. And so we just sang a song a couple minutes ago, just before um, the choir sang, and it's called, called the Gloria Patre. Now, it's kind of a fancy name for a way in which we give God thanks. And it says, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy 
Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. The camera is looking at you. Yeah. For all of our folks out there in TV land. But anyway, you know what? I want you to, when I say Trinity, it means three. Trinity means three. And reminds us that God is known to us in three different ways. is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, when I talk about Father, I'm talking about Father, Mother, as Creator. God is our Creator. He's created all things, everything that we see. Jesus is our lover, the lover of our life and of our souls. And the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us along the way every single day. Just like your parents are not only your parents, but you know what? Your parents are also maybe their husband or a wife, or maybe they're a worker, or maybe they're a player. They play a game or something. They do those different things, but they're just one person. And in the same way, we remember that God is one, but he's known to us in very cool and different ways. Is the creator of all things? Is Jesus who came in flesh and blood and is the Holy Spirit that lives in us. Now, this is a very hard or kind of a difficult concept, but I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of an intro to it because you'll hear about it all throughout your life if you're a follower of Jesus, that we believe that God is a trinity and known to us in three different ways. So, I have a song not, all, not the Gloria, but I have another song, and it's a song that will help us in some way to praise God. You know the song? This is the song I want to teach you, and I think, I, I don't know, we might have done it a long time ago, but it has sign language. You know what sign language is? Sign language is doing things, yeah, where you don't do it verbally, right? And so this is the signs that I want to teach you this morning, okay? This is the sign for father. This is the sign for mother. This is the sign for Jesus. You know why that's the sign for Jesus? He died on the cross, nails in the hand. And this is spirit. Spirit goes like this, okay? And it's a very simple song, and you guys can do it with me, okay? And it's about Father, Jesus, Spirit. And it goes like this, okay? It goes like this. Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Now, if you know this, you can sing it along with me, okay? So help me out here. And can you guys help me with emotions, okay? So we can go father or mother, okay? Father, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Jesus, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you. How I love you. Thank you so much. You guys did a great job. Give yourselves a hand. Let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us and we can all join in together, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
thank you so much for coming up. You guys have a great day. You may go out to children's activities, or if you really want to hear a good sermon, you can stay in here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> or if you want to celebrate communion, there we go. Walt, you're up. You know, <clears throat> Reverend Larry, I, I learned so much from the children's message, but I'm going to stick around for that good sermon. Um, by the way, good morning, everyone. And good morning to those of you in the church family who are joining us via the live stream from all over the world. World Wide Web. Aren't we blessed to have that resource available for those who really want to be here, but for their own particular reasons can't, but they are here in, uh, in virtual. <clears throat> Before I forget, uh, be sure and take the friendship pads from the pews in front of you and uh, jot down your name and uh, pass it down the pews so when we greet each other in a moment we can do so by name. Uh, this is Communion Sunday, the first Sunday of the month tr uh, traditionally here at SLPC. And uh, for those of you who are uh, watching us via the live stream, you have an opportunity uh, to uh, partake in communion as well. Uh, at, uh, as we do every Sunday, but at a new time now, out here at the carport, uh, drive out, drive through communion for years. It was uh, 12 noon, and now it's been pulled ahead to 11:30. So don't miss that. 11:30 this morning, out of the carport here at SLPC off at Savage Street, or as Reverend Dan calls it, Main Street in Spring Lake. At 11:30, we'll have drive through communion. Uh, craft fair and bake sale is coming up. And by the way, you know, a, a lot of people say, you know, Walt, I can read. You know, I, we don't need you up here reading the announcements to us. Well, those of you who are joining us via the live stream do not have this available. So I am here to serve you in that sense as well. Uh, we have uh, arts and crafts sale coming up Saturday, June 17th uh, in the church West Lawn over here, the large green space between here and the, uh, the Blue House, um, the manse. And uh, if you have baked goods or donations, you can bring those to the church by Friday, June 16th. All that relevant information is in your, uh, your newsletter there. Senior Day. A Senior Day event will be held in the SLPC Fellowship Hall downstairs, Monday, June 12th, part of the Spring Lake Heritage Festival. Uh, SLPC, as Reverend Dan reminds us, is much, much bigger, much larger than... Sundays at 10 a.m. here within the four walls. We are participating, a participant in the Spring Lake Heritage Festival uh, during Senior Day and also Family Fun Night, which is uh, Wednesday, June 14th. Uh, there will be a Family Fun Night event held over here by the pavilion. And uh, I think the, the children have coined this the dinosaur part. So it will be over there for Family Fun Night part of the Spring Lake Heritage Festival on Wednesday, June 14th. Father's Day Sunday is coming up. Everyone encouraged to wear Hawaiian-themed shirts and clothing uh, as celebration of Father's Day. Or as Reverend Dan reminds us, for Baby Dad's Day, that's coming up on June 18th in celebration of Father's Day. Community Shred Day, again, SLPC getting involved in the community, much larger than 10 a.m., here within the four walls that will be coming up on Saturday, July 15th. Technology recycle also available. And summer office hours, those are listed there as well. And church family celebrations, those individuals and couples who are celebrating a milestone event in their life and families, uh, those are also listed uh, in your uh, weekly newsletter here as well. So are there any other, yes, Terry. Um, this is the choir. Will this work, Jeff, right here? Uh, this is the choir's last Sunday until this fall. Um, can I, uh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> look at us, we need a rest. Can we pay you? <laughs> and speaking of that, if you can sing, please join us. This is, this is 
quality people doing quality work every single Sunday. Um, and I just want to thank them, uh, the work that they put in, being here, um, <laughs> putting up with my horrible, horrible jokes um, <laughs> every single Sunday, well, and Thursday. But, but uh, it's, <laughs> you know, I can't tell you how much they mean to me and that we would love to have you join us if you could sing. Even if you think you can sing, <laughs> and you do not have to read music. All right, we do go over the parts so everybody is comfortable, okay? So when we reconvene, you see the, the, uh, the announcement in the bulletin this fall, please join us. I also wanna thank uh, Marsha uh, for all that she's done, uh, again, Every, you know, she's here every Sunday, even when the choir's not playing, she's here doing her, doing her thing. Um, and something that a lot of people don't know, Marsha played the first solo I ever had in my life. Marsha was the accompanist. <laughs> so she's still, she's still doing it after all these years. But uh, I think you were, what, 12? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was 15. Yeah. So, okay. But thank you. Uh, and thank you, choir. Thank you so much for what you do for us. At the <laughs> All right. Let's take this opportunity to uh, greet our church family of Monison. seated. Uh, before we go to a time of prayer, um, I do have one announcement to share. Um, I'm glad that Sarah, my wife, uh, has Facebook because I got uh, found out that um, Betty Gleason passed away this morning. And so I um, I invite you to uh, keep Betty's family in your prayers. Um, it was about a week ago that I shared communion with Betty and uh, with her son as well. And I can tell you that Betty was ready. Um, she lived life well and exercised and all that good stuff. But she said, when my body's going down, I'm ready. And so um, the lymphoma took her rather quickly. And so I, rem I just ask that you would... Uh, keep her family in your prayers, but we also rejoice in uh, the homecoming that she has received as well. So, and then just a little personal note, um, my wife Sarah had foot surgery a couple weeks ago and I just pray for, ask you to pray uh, for healing for her as well. So she probably doesn't want me to say that and she's looking at the live stream going, oh my gosh, why do you have to? Anyway, um, but I, you know what? We can use all the prayers we can get, right? So let's, uh, let's pray together, okay? Lord God, um, I give you thanks. Thanks for your goodness and grace that is revealed to us in your beautiful creation. 
for the budding of the trees, for the coming alive of springtime and summer, for the warmth of the sun, for the gentle rain that we hope will come, for all these good and beautiful gifts, we give you thanks. But also, God, we come knowing you not only as our father, as our mother, as our, as our creator, but we also come knowing you as Jesus made flesh dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We give you thanks for that journey that you continue to walk beside us along the way, knowing that Jesus is the one who teaches us, but not only is our teacher, but is our Lord and is our Savior. We thank you that you have not left us comfortless, but you have given us the Holy Spirit, the one who encourages along the way and empowers us to do more than we could ever begin to think or ask. We give you thanks, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for your presence and your peace in our lives. As we gather here this morning, we have specific needs on our minds. We give you thanks for the, for the witness of Betty Gleason. We pray that we give you thanks for the hope that is revealed to her in the homecoming that she has received. We pray that you would be the comfort and the peace of her family in the midst of their loss. I pray for Sarah and for others who, who need your healing touch in their lives, who need you, O divine physician, to reach down and encourage and heal them. We pray for each one for many needs that are not shared verbally from this pulpit, but are deep within our hearts. Each one of us come at this moment and at this time silently and bring them before your throne of grace. Lord God, thank you for bending your ear to hear our prayer. That you who has created all things are intimate enough to know and want to know our concerns. We pray for Dan and Diane as they're away. Give them a refreshing and a renewing time. We pray for the session of this church, for the leadership, for all who serve you. Giving thanks to for Terry and for the choir, for the past year of ministry among us, for all the musical staff, for the office staff, for all who serve you and who make you known to this community. And so we lift up our prayer to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, the Creator God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. going to be sharing uh, the lectionary passages this morning come from two different texts that I'm going to be reading and I didn't know if I was going to read the second one but I've decided I'm going to read it um, and then we're going to share together um, in a message. So the first scripture that is listed in your bulletin is from the gospel of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 and this is the very end of this gospel, the first gospel, gospel meaning good news. And um, it is Jesus saying farewell, following his resurrection to his disciples and kind of giving them a, um, a task, let's say, and kind of giving them instruction. And so Matthew 28, reading verses 16 through 20, and uh, I will share that, and then we're going to go back to Genesis. So open your ears, open your hearts now to receive the word of God. This is Jesus. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. And then we're going to be turning to <clears throat> the first book of the Bible. So we have the first uh, book of the New Testament and the first book of the Bible from the Old Testament of Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading the story of creation. And uh, so I invite you to join with me and read along if you're able in your pew Bibles because it's at the very first page. So anyway, let's read together. <clears throat> in the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was formless and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. With a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And the God, God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning on the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters. Let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And so it was. And God called the dome sky and he called the eve. And there was evening and there was morning on the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And so it was. And God called the dry land earth and the water were, that were gathered together. He called seas and God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, planting plants, yielding seed and Fruits of trees of every kind on the earth that will bear with seed in it. And so it was. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants, yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind, bearing fruit with a seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be signs for the seasons and for the days and years and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give the light upon the earth. And so it was. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. And so God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sky, in the seas and let the birds multiply the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of every kind. And so it was. And God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Let them be, have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree and with every fruit, seed of its fruit, and you shall have them for food 
and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food, and so it was. And God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had done. And so God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I hadn't read that entire uh, chapter in church in a long time, and uh, but it's a beautiful chapter. Um, let's pray together. Lord God, your word is the living word. As you created all things in the beginning, you sustain them now and forever shall be. We give you thanks for that living word that speaks to us today. For that word may leap within our hearts anew and fresh that you might bring meaning to it once again. May the words of my mouth and the meditation and the thinking of these your people be pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our everlasting Redeemer. Amen. If you are able, um, go back with me in your mind's eye and remember when you were five or six years old. Hmm, long time ago for some. Do you remember your school, your teacher, your principal, your classmates? Maybe some. Some of you may have grown up in the country, perhaps a one-room schoolhouse. I know that's true of my mother-in-law and my mom. For others, you have made, have been, a, like my journey, growing up in the city with several classes of students in each grade. Your world back then was much smaller, but hopefully happy. I remember my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Ely. She was a kind but strict teacher taking seriously the responsibility of giving us students a good start to our learning experience. We were taught to behave, to listen, and to learn. One thing I noticed about Mrs. Ely was the squeak of her shoes. We always knew if she was coming down the hall, so we could try to be good again, by the squeak of her shoes. We would hear her before we saw her. Well, imagine my surprise one day when I heard the squeak of those shoes while I was in the grocery store helping my dad with the weekly shopping. Well, I looked up and there she was, Mrs. Ely, with a grocery cart and a husband. I was kind of confused as a five-year-old because I thought Mrs. Ely just lived at school. <laughs> and for some reason, I must have thought that she did not shop or need groceries. It was mind-blowing to me. Mrs. Ely in the grocery store. <laughs> a regular person. Can you believe that my teacher was a regular person? Well, I only knew Mrs. Ely as a teacher, and it was so odd to see her out of context. I did not know Mrs. Ely in any other way. This morning, we celebrate Trinity Sunday, the Sunday after Pentecost in the church year. We have gone through Advent and the birth of Christ. We remember the Epiphany of God's revelation among us. We have just celebrated Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
we have been able to kind of see the many facets of God specifically known to us in the Trinity as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To know God is to have our world enlarged and to be surprised by how he meets us in different ways at different places. So let's take a look at our scripture this morning. In the lectionary passage for Trinity Sunday today, we have the Genesis passage, which is in the beginning. We have the passage in Matthew chapter 28, which is the end of Jesus' ministry where he gives the Great Commission. And then we have a couple of passages from the epistles in Corinthians that was at the very beginning of the service as kind of our call to come together. So I have a question for you this morning. Um, my, my message is, talks about to know God is to know peace, and, and that's just the beginning. But if we don't know God, we, we have no peace, no peace. So my question to you is, when you pray, how do you pray? To whom do you pray more specifically? I always find this kind of interesting. So when you pray, who do you pray to? And perhaps you pray to, to different aspects of the Godhead at different times. You know? I, when I'm out at, at overlooking uh, Boyd's Bayou, or I, I look out over Lake Michigan, or I am up north and I'm exploring a beautiful trail, I'm, I'm in awe of God's creation. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it marvelous that God just called all these things into being in his imagination, in his mind? And he said one day, or where there wasn't really one day because there was no days. <laughs> I know a lot of us get stuck on, some people, not a lot of us, some people get stuck on whether it was a literal 24 hour. I don't really care. The point is God created in whatever space of time God wants. I don't care, a day in God's sight is a million years, so that's okay. But the marvelous thing is that God created. That God is not only the mother, the father, that God is all, all that we ever know or ever have. That's a marvelous thing. And so when you pray, perhaps sometimes you pray and you say, Father, I just thank you for the creation that you have given to us, for the creation that surrounds us. Perhaps sometimes you pray in this way. Perhaps you might pray, Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to live like you. And so there are some times when we pray to Jesus, it seems to me. Sometimes we want Jesus to be the one who, who guides us along the way. And then we go back to his words in Matthew chapter 28. And he says, you know what, folks? All authority in heaven and on earth, I've given it to you. I have it. I'm giving it to you. Go, therefore, and teach all people. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And you know what? I'm going to be with you always because I will send you the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And so sometimes we, we pray not only to the Creator God, who has made us and sustains us, but we pray to Jesus, who is the lover of our life and lover of our soul, Lord, Savior, best friend. But sometimes we pray to the Spirit. Jesus said that he would give us the Holy Spirit, that God would give us the Holy Spirit, that we might be able to know the encouragement of the Spirit in our lives, that we might be able to be empowered by the Spirit, that I will not leave you comfortless, Jesus said. So I'm just wondering, who do you pray to? Do you pray to the Father, the Creator, Mother God? Do you pray to Lord Jesus, Savior of your soul? Do you pray to the Holy Spirit? 
how do we know God? Now, I find that there's some people who emphasize different aspects of God. They just want God to be, uh, um, not, I don't know if they want to, but for some reason they emphasize God in various ways. For some pre people, um, maybe when I grew up, I knew a woman who was, it, it was all about a vengeful God. Going to scare the wits out of you, <laughs> you know, and you got to make you feel as guilty as possible because that's what God does. Now, there's aspects in the Bible that talk about that, right? I mean, there's aspects in the Bible where God says, uh, you know, I'm a jealous God. I want your full attention, <laughs> you know. But there's others that, that, that just focus on the fact that God is a totally, uh, you know, just unbelievable, whatever you want to do, it's okay with me kind of God. You know, and and there's some aspects of the Bible that are about that. You know, I'm I'm a gracious God, I'm merciful. You know, I love you no matter what. But that doesn't mean that's all God is. Have you ever heard the saying that? Um, oh, um, the more I learn, the less I know. <laughs> that's what I believe about God is I want to explore, I want to read, I want to study. But the more I find out about God, the more I learn about God, the more I travel with God, I understand that God is way beyond my understanding or expectation. But in some small way, I know God in the Trinity. I have a little tie that I wore today. I like my tie. It, someone, a parishioner gave it to me, and it has like some of the characteristics of God, you know, compassionate, gracious, giving, honest, uh, friend, you know, it goes on and on, kind of the virtues of God and that sort of thing. And those are all aspects of who God is to each one of us. But I know that in the midst of my life, the more that I try to box God, the more he explodes out of it. <laughs> and that is the beauty of God. If we don't have God in our lives, we don't have peace. We don't have truth. We don't have love or grace or any of it. But if we know God, we begin to explore those aspects, those virtues of who God is, and we begin to enjoy his fullness. And so I just invite you to know God. And let God surprise you along the way and enlarge your world and help you to know that he cannot be boxed in one context that he will continue to walk with you along the way, teaching you that you might know peace and grace and love and justice. And not only know it, but that you can live it. Enough. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for um, your goodness to us and for your grace. As we now partake of this supper, I pray that you would be known to us in the breaking of the bread and known to us in the drinking of the cup. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you now to join with me in the giving of our morning offerings. Thank you. 
is the body of Christ. And as he laid all his life, he offered his sacrifice that we be seated. It's kind of funny. I looked up at the clock at, and I go, oh my word, I can't believe what time it is. God is timeless, but Larry, you got to be on time. Excuse me. So anyway, <laughs> let's uh, partake in the Lord's Supper together. So the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he's betrayed, after having given thanks for it, he took some bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. As many times as you eat of it, remember me. And after they had eaten together, he took the cup and he said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. As many times as you drink of it, remember me. And so the bread which we break and the cup which we bless is the communion of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, broken and shed for us and for the remission of our sins. God is known to us in the breaking of the bread and in the drinking of the cup. In all of his glory and goodness, his mercy made known to us, his love extended to us, that we might be a forgiven, a renewed, and a gracious people. So I invite you, uh, this is the table of the Lord. Anyone with the love of Jesus in their hearts is more than welcome. Jesus says, come, come. And so I invite you to come as well. In our tradition, um, we are the 
way we do it here at church will be coming forward. If you're not able to stand and come forward, um, we will have a rover coming around and serving because we want everybody, everybody who would like to have communion this morning um, to have so. If you choose not to, just uh, wave your hand and we'll pass you by this morning. So, come people of God, for all things are now ready. I invite the elders to come forward and then following that for the uh, congregation to come forward to receive and know God's goodness in these elements. Please come. Who's up this morning? That's the question. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. And we do have gluten-free um, as well. And so the gluten-free is um, a, the separate bowl. So I would like to, uh, going to be our roamer for us? Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. And this will be the gluten-free. Come, people of God, for all things are now ready.
I'll tell you, it's a beautiful thing just seeing people come forward. And it just reminds me of what it's going to be like when Jesus is able to share this great feast again. When all the saints in glory are just coming together and, and coming down. And we'll see those who have called upon the name of Jesus, those who uh, throughout the ages, friends and family, and we'll be all gathered together. And so, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's sing together. Um, what is our song? This is my father's world. Oh, yeah. I chose that one because of the creation theme, you know. So, anyway, here we go. This is my father's world. What number is it? Okay, you all take it. Let's stand up and sing it together. Bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you, amaze you with his grace, lavish you with his love, and give you all a peace that passes understanding. No God and no peace. Amen.
I didn't expect to do that one. So, okay. Well, Ruth asked me that. I'm here to hear so. Yeah. I'm a Yankee Doodle. I saw your. Um, Meyer did his, uh, his uh, landscape. Okay. And this job. 